high schoolers start a band. A classical chamber ensemble may not be the first thing you'd picture, but there isn't much that is typical about the Cromwasi Septet. The group is made up of members of the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra and Franklin Pond Chamber Music. They have a pair of concerts coming up this month, and I spoke with harpist Madeline Chen and violinist Rana Kumar about the group. Harpist Madeline Chen and violinist Rana Kumar, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Madeline. What drew you to the harp? I started a harp when I was eight years old, but um, I became interested in the harp since I was three years old because I used to go to several festivals where there were always harpists and I just enjoyed sitting and watching them play. Did you think they were angelic? I did. Originally, my mom thought I just liked the harpists because of their pretty dresses, <laughs> but I just really was attracted to the music. And Ronak, what made you pick up the violin? So when I was little, uh, my mom used to put um, Elmo and the orchestra on, and I'd always listen to it. And I love hearing the violins play when they have like their little solo part Aww. in the orchestra. And I just picked it up because I thought it was really pretty interesting. It was a pretty instrument. Elmo is the gateway to <laughs> so many good exactly. things. The Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra, ASYO, and Franklin Pond are both outstanding organizations, and playing with them is one thing. What made you decide you wanted to form your own ensemble? I've been in the Franklin Pond Chamber program for about three years now, and I've just in, really enjoyed playing chamber music. And then Ronak, he um, texted me through Group Me and asked if I would like to play Ravel Introduction Allegro. And it was like, that's a beautiful piece. So we got a group together. Yeah, there's another <laughs> way. Um, that piece by Ravel is shimmering and otherworldly and sensual. It's so beautiful. service, that that piece would be lost to us because Ravel went to drop off some shirts to be cleaned before he was going to go on a trip, right. and the score was folded up oh, wow. in one of <laughs> oh his God. pockets. Can you imagine if that had been lost to us? It's a really pretty piece. What aspects of it particularly appealed to you? Um, for me, I really love the whole fairy tale esque that Ravel provides. I think he's like, in my opinion, 
the most amazing orchestral like organizer like he can orchestrate anything so phenomenally like the pictures like the exhibition by Mussorgsky and I love how he creates the harp as like a I guess instrument of fairy tale fairy tales and I love the cadenza a lot and she plays it amazingly so <laughs> it's always yeah. a treat to hear her is the repertoire wrong uh, Madeline said you won her over you wooed her with that Ravel is it a democratic process you yeah. have I mean I just really like the piece I listen to it on YouTube because like I'm one of those people who only listen to classical music so do I yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, and I've always wanted to play a piece by Ravel because I've never really played an actual piece I've like listened to recordings and um, I was just talking to her and I was like oh we have a amazing harpist who could probably play that and like I know ASYO has a lot of phenomenal players so because um, I was in the uh, organization last year and we did the Brahms horn trio and um, I was like there's obviously amazing players and I've always wanted to play a piece like that so I'll just ask around and it worked out so it was good but there was no process it was very hoping yeah. everything would work out but actually, my teacher did suggest that I play the piece before oh, Rana yeah. <laughs> asked me. So that was kind of neat that both of them wanted me to play the piece. Rana, you've performed at Carnegie Hall? Yes, I have. Which I don't think many high schoolers <laughs> can claim. What are you hoping to do with the musical experience of playing in a chamber ensemble and your organizational skills putting it together? <laughs> um, I mean, I would love to continue doing music um, in college. My dream would be being a part of like a symphony, not the Atlanta Symphony. But um, I think chamber music has also been especially helpful for me because yes, it has helped me with organizational skills and leadership. And I also think it would help me when overall in the future, with my musicianship because chamber music is very, very helpful because it's like or an orchestra, but it's so much more, um, I guess, individual. And you have to really work on like, not only like um, playing the parts right, but making sure your musicianship works with other people, making sure your dynamics are okay, making sure you blend with the sound and also with different instruments like the harp, it's also poses more challenges. So it's like a lot of adaptation that you have to learn. You're very exposed. Yes. <laughs> you can't hide with all those other section members because there are none. But it's a beautifully intimate form of music and it's stripped to the essentials. What appeals to you about chamber music? Um, I like how it's easy to hear every single instrument because as a harp, I feel like sometimes other instruments can overpower me. And so this is a time where I, c I could find a nice balance between um, the different instruments. Apparently, you've decided that when your ensemble members graduate from high school, that will be the end of the group. Why give yourselves an end date? <laughs> Sadly, in the chamber music repertoire, uh, there's not much for uh, septet alone with, um, and then also with violin and uh, harp, there's maybe, I think, two pieces I know on the top of my head, which is like Cesson's Fantasy, which she played last year. I see. And then, um, I think that's pretty much, there's Debussy's yeah. dances for string quartet and harp, but I think that's pretty mm -hmm. much it, with my knowledge. You'll just have to commission some. <laughs> there must be composers among the musicians, the young musicians you encounter. 
The diversity of your group is wonderful. Was that intentional? Um, it wasn't. Yeah. We just happened to get like a wide variety of people, I guess. That's, yeah. But that's... it's really what makes us unique. Yeah. And I think ASYO itself is such a diverse body and the culture is so good that like kids won't care about age or like where people live and stuff like that. People will travel like some of us have to travel an hour just to get to rehearsal and to I guess why rehearsal, but like everyone's super willing and it's a really just good organization. Well, it's such a privilege to study with the Atlanta Symphony musicians. And obviously you are benefiting from it, but music doesn't take up your entire life. I'm amazed at some of the extracurricular things that you do. I am also part of Girl Scouts, and I'm a senior, and I'm currently working towards my gold award, which is like the highest achievement a Girl Scout could earn. And Ronak, you organize middle schoolers and take them into nursing homes. My two friends, uh, they started a foundation, or not a, a, a club, at my old middle school. And I was a part of it, and I thought it was a really cool idea because, like, I a, got to see my friends again, and it was a really cool experience because we got to play just like orchestral, mu simple orchestral music, so everyone could play it. But um, it was just really fun. And the year after that, I got to become on the leadership committee of that club, and we got to perform at a homeless shelter for. Uh, and then we also, I couldn't make that performance, but they performed at multiple um, senior homes. And it's just a really nice feeling to bring like smiles on people's faces who are going through such tough times. Last, I think, December, a couple of us played at a um, elderly home, and it was for a Christmas or a Christmas special. Oh. And um, they had other people there as well, and it was just a really great experience. Madeline, you play ukulele and cello and piano in addition to your heart. I do. Um, so I began the piano before all the other instruments at the age of five because my mom wanted us to have a musical foundation because it's like a good entryway into any other instrument since it's both bass and treble clef. And so um, after our, I started that, then I went into a harp. And then around the same time, I started the cello in sixth grade um, because I wanted to be a part of my school orchestra. Your mother has a lot of wisdom. <laughs> she does. <laughs> and Rana, you're in the math club too? Oh yeah, uh, it's just a, um, an honor society where uh, people come in the mornings uh, for tutoring and then uh, we have to, uh, they basically, we help them and then um, for, we have to do it for a couple hours per semester and it's just a little thing to help people. Oh, with just a little thing to help. So, <laughs> You both have these well-rounded lives in addition to your music. At this point, do you think you want to pursue musical careers? Um, possibly. Um, I might minor or double major in music, but I'm not quite sure what I would like to have as my career yet. I would probably, my dream is to obviously become a uh, orchestral violinist, but um, I know it's a, an extremely hard place to be successful in. So I most likely will double major, or if not, I'll just major in music and then see how it goes. And then maybe I can, I'll minor definitely in something else. And I'm not planning on going to conservatory, so I can still get some education in other fields as well. But I will always have music in my future, no matter what. It really has been a joy talking with you both. Madeline Chen, Rana Kumar, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> the Kramwazi Septet will perform at the Woodruff Art Center for their Fall into Spring concert on May 12th at 2 p.m. That event is free. And the group also will compete in the 2019 Franklin Pond Chamber Music Competition, May 25th and 26th. 
in Spivey Hall on the campus of Clayton State University. But the next concert is May 12th at 2 p.m. of the arts and the ways in which we express ourselves creatively. Catch an encore broadcast tonight at 8. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. we will speak with the Indian American comic Tushar Singh and Indian filmmaker and celebrity chef Vikas Kamar. Our producers are Mike Johns and Summer Evans. Claire Reynolds is senior producer. Kevin Rinker is our engineer. And I'm Lois Reitzes. I would just love it if you would follow me on Twitter at L-O-I-S-R-E-I-T-Z-E-S. Thanks for listening to 90.1 WAB. Atlanta's choice for NPR. Support for WABE comes from Children's Museum of Atlanta, presenting the new exhibit, Run, Jump, Fly, Adventures in Action, featuring an action star training center that is fun for kids and adults alike. More information at childrensmuseumatlanta.org. And from Rocco's European Garage, family-owned and operated since 2009. Rocco's three locations in Buckhead, East Cobb, and North Marietta service all European vehicles. More info available at roccoseuropeangarage.com. Funding for Here and Now comes from MathWorks, creators of MATLAB and Simulink software, accelerating the pace of